In this video, I'm going to show you a really cool way that you can add digital signage to your church for the cost of one of these. Hey church hackers, we all want to have digital signage in our lobbies and all around our buildings. That's just part of it. It's a great way for us to tell people about upcoming events and registration deadlines and all kinds of things like that without having to do a whole lot of work. Stacy from our Church Media Hacks group on Facebook shared this terrific little hack about how to use a Chromecast and your Google account to deploy a digital sign. I'm going to show you exactly how we do it. But first, if you want to learn how to use and leverage digital media and technology so that you can amplify the gospel, start now by clicking that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you don't miss a thing. First thing you're going to need is a Chromecast. You can get these pretty much anywhere. You can get them at Best Buy, you can get them at Amazon, you can get them at Walmart, Costco, Sam's, pretty much any place that you can buy some electronic equipment, you can get this. And they're pretty cheap too. Now, if you've never set one of these up, you can watch my tutorial about how to basically connect it to your Google account. Now, one of the things that's really cool about the Chromecast is it has a screensaver. Um, they call it ambient mode. Basically, when you're not doing something, when you're not streaming Netflix or whatever you like to watch on here, you can basically have a screensaver running. And that screensaver can come from Google, and they can show you all kinds of great, beautiful pictures, or it can come from your Google Photos account. And that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we get this all set up. Uh, I've got my Android phone. You could be using an Android or an iPhone. doesn't matter. I've also plugged in our... Chromecast and on the sample TV over here this is uh, gonna basically be any of these screens that you have stationed around your lobby okay the first thing we need to do is we need to launch the Google Home app now if you haven't installed it then you need to hit your App Store and install it and you can see that we have uh, Chromecast down here and we've also got uh, it looks like one of the televisions here in the house uh, but look, up at the top it says set up one device. So we're going to choose set up one device. And we're going to walk through this. Looking for devices. And it says, look, Chromecast found. Would you like to set up the traveling Chrome TV? That's the one that I have currently plugged in. Right over here it says traveling Chrome TV. It's one that I've set up before. So we'll just say yes. It's connected and is asking us, do you see this code W4Y9? I take a look over there, W4Y9, yes I do, and I hit yes. And just agree to the legal stuff. Uh, do I want to improve the Chromecast? No. And we're going to call it, uh, let's see, traveling Chrome and hit next. And it's going to be on the 2G wireless network here at the house. Remember the password for this Wi-Fi network for setting up and later? Absolutely. And when you look over here, it's doing its thing. Chromecast is now connecting to CenterPoint. And there you go. You see that beautiful image on there? That is some of the default imagery that comes with uh, your Chromecast. Just picking some pretty things from Google. Before you use your Google Assistant, blah, blah, blah. Have to go through all this stuff, linking your video services. Next, I'm just going to go through all of that. All done. Continue. And that Chrome is ready. And now I'm back here, and I have the traveling Chrome, which is the one that I want to be using for our digital signage. Okay? Now, first things first, I may want to select that and change the name of it. Digital signs now I know exactly which one okay so digital signs and right now you can see that the ambient settings which is the screensaver is showing some Google stuff okay now that we've got the Chromecast set up and running what we need to do is we need to start populating it with the slides that we want to use now this is a hack okay the Chromecast was not meant to do this but if you follow this procedure it can and will work for you. The first thing you want to know is that you should make your slides be the appropriate ratio that your screens are, okay? Just so that it fills up the screen nicely. So um, that's generally going to be, you know, 16 by 9 as far as the aspect ratio goes, and pretty much either 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720. That's that's the, the standard HD ones. Now, if you've got 4K screens all around and you're pushing 4K content to them and all that, then 
by all means, make them 4K. But the really important thing is just so that it looks good and cohesive is to keep the aspect ratio the same. Let's just go to photos.google.com. One thing I would recommend that you do is set up a Google account for your church. That way you can use that account and not actually get into your own personal account and start confusing things and all that. So just keep that in mind. So what we're going to do first is go create an album. That album we can call Info Slides. How about that? So I've got a folder here with slides in it various bits and pieces of information that I want to be showing up in there. Okay, and I'm just going to click and drag, and they are going to upload. And here they all are. Fantastic. Now, I've also got a couple of encouragement slides, you know, just some scriptures, things like that, just to kind of break up the monotony of just straight information. So we can just drag those in. And then we're done. We've got our folder called info, or excuse me, our, our album called Info Slides, and we're ready to go. Okay, now we're going to be using the Chromecast screensaver, okay? It's, it's called ambient mode. Uh, basically, when the Chromecast is not being used to cast um, Netflix or play music through or anything like that, when it's just kind of sitting on its own, it does a slideshow. Uh, and it's actually really cool. Okay, so I've selected digital signs here in the home app. And we're using ambient mode here. So if I choose down here at the bottom where it says personalize ambient, I can then choose to do stuff from the art gallery or in this case, I'm going to go to Google Photos and it's going to load up the albums that I have. Now, here is an album called Info Slides. OK, if I were to choose that, in fact, let, let, let's back up just a hair. I'm just going to choose. You, you'll notice we've got select friends and family. OK, so if I were to put Jaina. And if I were to put my grandmother and hit confirm and confirm those two, then you'll see that it's going to be showing pictures that involve Jaina, my daughter. And there's Jaina again. And basically what it's doing is it's curating things that match the criteria, which in this case is Lola, my grandmother, and Jaina. So right now we're seeing Jaina. If it comes up with one of my grandmother, it'll show that as well. However, that's really not what we want to do here. So we're going to uncheck that, and if we were to choose the info slides, it will curate those as well, and they will be the ones that are showing up. Now the problem is that it's curating them. It's not showing everything that's in there. It's showing what it thinks is the best for you to see, which gets really annoying. So basically what we're going to do is we are going to use a little hack inside of Google Photos where we can mark something as our favorites and then we will tell it to use the favorites album. We've made our info slides album. Now what we can do is open it up and just mark everything in their favorite. Unfortunately you can't do this in bulk so what we need to do is just open it up and then hit the little star to mark it as a favorite. Go to the next one, mark it as a favorite, go to the next one, etc, etc, etc. And we're done. Those are all marked as favorites. And now let's go look at the favorites album. And here's the items that we've selected as one of our favorites. So now let's go back over to our phone. And we've got the Google Photos selected there. Let's choose to refresh. And it's going to go through and refresh everything. And you'll notice our favorites album showed up. And it's got 13 photos in it. And we're going to select that. We're going to deselect info slides. And then we can take a look over here and see what starts showing up. Senior Adult Luncheon, that's in favorites. Evangelism Training, yay, they're showing up. Weekly Activities, you get the picture. Now, one thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have the appropriate items showing up on our screen here. So if you'll notice... I'll go back over here. Um, it may be really hard for you to see, but down in the corner, we've got the time and we've got the weather. Yeah, it's up to you if you want to show that or not. Um, what it does when you do show it is it puts a little bit of a uh, vignette down here so that that information shows up nice and clear. So I just, you know, 
prefer to just kind of just cut it off so we don't have to worry about it. So let's hide the time. And we're going to um, show portrait orientation. We do want that. Um, and let's see, we want to hide the weather. And then we can look down here at the bottom and we can do the slideshow speed. How often should it change the images? Five seconds, which is what I have right now. Um, all the way up to 10 minutes. Um, for the hallway, for just ambient signage, 10 seconds ought to be just fine. Uh, that gives people enough time to see it and then register what's on there. But I'm gonna keep it at five just so that we know what's going on over here. And let's take a look. See, we turned off those um, items, the information down at the bottom. So now we don't have that vignetting showing up on here and it's a little clear and it looks just like regular old digital signage. It's, it's pretty easy to set up, but you just gotta keep in mind that we're hacking. It's not designed to be used as digital signage. It's designed to show you pretty things that you know that, that you should enjoy. And so we have to kind of hack around a little bit to get it to show what we want it to show. So remember, make an album and then set everything in that album as a favorite. Now, if you were to go into your Google Photos, and this is why I tell you to set up an account for the church and use that account instead of yours. If you do go into your own account and you know you got a picture of your little kid, you know, with birthday cake on their face or something, and then you go, Oh, this is one of my favorites, and you forget and you mark it as a favorite, now all of a sudden it's showing up in the lobby at your church and well, <laughs> that could be awkward. So the expense in setting this up really comes with determining how many Chromecasts you need. If you're like our church, we already have a video distribution system set up in our work center in our media booth so all we really have to do is one of the inputs that's available on there put a Chromecast in it and then we just you know go from one which is currently showing whatever is being broadcast over our live stream or channel two which is like just what's coming from pro presenter or input three for us which is going to be just a Chromecast now if you don't have a distribution system already in place like that you just have a bunch of monitors that are out and deployed and kind of doing their own thing then basically you just need to go buy a bunch of Chromecasts and install them on each one. You just set them up all using that same Gmail account and then they'll go into ambient mode and they'll just start randomly showing the things that you've marked as favorites. So when it's time to change out the information, you just go into that that, that album that you created, info slides or whatever you named it, go in there and select the items that you don't want done and turn off favorites. They won't be favorites anymore. And then add in new slides and mark them as favorites and then they'll show up. Just work this hack and make it work for you. And of course, if this has been helpful for you, then come hang out with me in the next video and let's see if I can help solve another problem that you have.